Right, in this video I'll show you how to get the PlayStation 2 emulator PCSX2 up and running in Ubuntu. They've provided a repository to get the deb package, so we can add that. So sudo add apt repository and then the PPA link. There will be a note of all this in the description below. And then sudo apt get update. And I've got a couple of choices here of do we have the stable version or the snapshot potentially unstable version. Let's try for the unstable version. So sudo apt get install pcsx2 unstable. Yep, let's go for that. While it's installing, you'll need to go and collect a PlayStation 2 BIOS file. I'm not going to give you the exact link for this, but let's say you put in PS2 BIOS into Google and then, oh, how about this one here? muparadise.me BIOS files for various systems. And let's say we'll download that file there, PS2 BIOS. And then I'm going to put all those files across into a folder I've called Sony BIOS under my console games folder. Right, so now the fun begins actually configuring the emulator. Right, language selector, leave it as a default system, unless you actually need to change it, of course. Right, next. Now, just to be really confusing, you have lots of different plugin options here, and I'm sure this looks absolutely bewildering. The first one, graphics, GS. I shall change to the GSDX. I found this had about the best quality on the emulation, actually, sort of was slightly faster than the other options there. There's no options there on pad. Sound, SPU, can leave as is, there's no options. CD, there's no options, so can leave that. So can leave everything else as is because there are no other options. The only one you get to choose is graphics. Now let's configure the graphics. Hmm. Well, set it for your own system here. What resolution do you use? Mine is 1920 by 1080. We well, can use the original PS2 resolution, of course. Uh, no, I shall uh, upscale it. Software mode setting. I'm just going to boost the number of threads. So I'm going to boost that to six. Six cores, six threads. I don't know. And choose the hardware renderer at the top there because I've got to do it in this video. I'll put the edge anti aliasing on. Then I'm going to leave everything else as is. Okay. The joypad settings, just you press the button and you set the option on your joypad. Um, let's quickly start my PS3 joypad. There it goes. So you just literally push the button and then you press the button on your controller. Ah, which isn't going to work because I've started the controller afterwards. I've come back to that one in a moment. Alright, let's go next. Now select a BIOS. Console games slash Sony. BIOS. Now there we go, and I also downloaded a different BIOS file. I did the same thing as earlier though, I just searched on Google and... Alright, finish. Okay, plugin started. Excellent. Let's just close everything and just go back in and I'm going to set that joypad up. So config, controllers, plugin settings. Pressing the button on the screen and then pressing the button on the controller. Nothing that special at all. It's kind of handy it being the same layout though as the PS3 controller. Here's something worth mentioning. If you're using a PS3 controller, you've got the option here of using Qt 6A. Connecting via Bluetooth for this. But there is a mention on here about hack 6-axis DS3 plugged in via USB. So if I went for a direct USB connection then I could use this option on here. Um, but they might start conflicting with each other. I've not really done much research on here, I just wanted to bring up the point on that. But if you're using any other generic USB, then that option doesn't matter. I'm just going to go into the emulation settings. There's loads more settings in here. You can leave pretty much everything as default here. It sort of has a selection of recommended settings. I found it sometimes worth moving this up a bit base frame rate, uh, move that to 130%. Uh, 
um, to what we've got here for the aspect ratio. Well, it's going to be either of those, it doesn't matter. And speed hacks. I have played around with these and they do seem to work okay in a couple of the games I've tried. Basically, I moved it on to a couple of points. You'll see when you come to play the games that oh, they don't necessarily emulate that well. Hmm. You do need a hefty CPU, like a disproportionately hefty CPU to get the games working. Anyway, there's loads more settings you can choose here. You, know, you can preset, safest, aggressive. <laughs> literally loads of options there to try and play around to improve the speed. Enable widescreen patches and to play a game ISO selector I have the games in the form of ISO files. Sony PS2. Let's do San Andreas. Then go system boot CDVD fast. Alt and enter, whoa. Okay, so it's vibrating and F5 fixes that. Still looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Let's come out of that. Right, here you go to show it working and prove I have got the settings right at some point. So I'll have to go back and show you them now. So that's all okay. Well, there we go. It's the game's playable. Um, sweet. That'll do. These are the options I've used. The leftmost things as default. Yep, going to default here. Increase the frame rate. So widescreen 16.9. Open there. Speed hacks. Ah, a few of things enabled there. And nothing for the game fixes. The plugin for the graphics. So I've used four rendering threads, enabled this edge anti aliasing, set my resolution, and yeah, nothing much else. I'm using the renderer as OpenGL hardware. The audio. Pulse Audio and Alsa. Controllers, nothing's changed and nothing's changed there. So yeah, that's it. That is everything. So that's how to get the PlayStation 2 emulator PC SX2 working in Ubuntu. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.